sectional 19 and 40, we're talking Leo at Northwood and Northridge at East Noble. I want to start with Northridge at East Noble because, you know, in, in this area, we don't get a good look at, at Northridge. They're not yeah. in our area. But I'll tell you what. Ask anybody on the Bishop Dwenger staff. Ask anybody that's had some some time to really delve into what they're able to do on a Friday night. It's a really good football team. Yeah, I talked to Coach Amstutz on Sunday night, and he was like, you know, you watch this team, and he's watched film for 12 years, high school football film. He's never seen a defense like this. You know, big, strong, fly to the football, disciplined, you know, in their gaps. It's just a dominant defense. You know, it's only given up seven points in the last six games, just 7.3 points per game overall this season. And, and, and their coach, Tom Wagaman, who, who was in a former East Noble assistant under Chris DePew. So he's familiar with, with East Noble and going to Kendallville and having to play. So this is a big time assignment for East Noble Friday night against a, a Northridge team that is really phenomenal defensively. How do you make sure that you can get things done offensively against that defense if you're Luke Amstutz in the East Noble offense? What do you have to do? Well, it's just basics. You know, you got to fire off the ball up front. You got to get a push. You got to, you know, really kind of get an advantage in the trenches and, and really just grind out yardage. You're not going to carve that defense up, but long, sustained drives, not shooting yourselves in the foot with turn turnovers and penalties and stuff like that. You just got to be fundamentally sound every game, but a, a, when you're playing a defense like Northridge, you have to be near perfect offensively. And Leo at Northwood, Leo had some trouble with Wawasee. Wawasee's yep. a pretty solid football team, though. They go to Wawasee, uh, beat them 20-16. to 16. Northwood this week, Northwood had no trouble with Angola. What are going to be some of the things that you're looking at in this game, specifically for Leo? You know, I like Taylor Hensinger at running back. Has kind of been there since Logan Leiter got moved out to wide out. Uh, he's stepped in admirably, the junior running back, and really given, you know, Leiter is is very good athlete, so he adds something on the outside of wide receiver, and you don't really lose much, if anything, in, at the running back position with Hensinger. So, you know, Leo is, is going to have to put up points in this game, um, which they've been able to do. You know, that offense has really come around as the season's gone on. So I've been really impressed with Leo's development. And uh, another tough assignment on the road. You know, Leo's not getting any favors here earlier in, in this in this, uh, this sectional. It's a tough sectional, and they've got to go on the road back-to-back weeks and play some tough teams. they got to get used to that for the Northeast 8 next year. Yeah, that's right. And those really tough ones on the road. For sure. Sectional 20 and 4A, Columbia City at New Haven, Norwell against Marion. That's going to be down in the courtyard. I don't know if there's a team in our area. Maybe I'm biased because I've seen them a couple times in person recently. But Columbia City has improved quite a bit from week one to yeah. week ten, specifically offensively and in that passing game. You know they got Meyer there, the big guy at the running back position. But their receivers catch everything. Bolt floats it up there, and it's on target. Uh, this could be a really tough game considering New Haven doubled them up 42-21 to during the regular season. This game is going to be closer in the regular season for sure, the 42-21 game. Um, I do think New Haven has the advantage on the ground. Nishan Jones should be back, should be healthy, missed last week's game. Up till last week, he had run for at least 100 yards in every game this season. So that was an, uh, a, a missed uh, dimension of the game for the Bulldogs last week. I think it's back this week. Um, can Columbia City match New Haven score for score? I think they're not going to win a 14-10 type game on Friday. If they're going to win, they're going to have to put up you know, 30, 35 points in my opinion. So we'll see. When you take a look at Columbia City's win last week against Southside, 39 to zip. Now, I know Southside didn't have the season that uh, they were hoping to have. But when you go into a team uh, at their place that has athletes like Southside yeah. and beat them 39 to zero, and you finish tied for last in the NHC, <laughs> yeah. the, A, that says something about the, the quality of the NHC, and B, it says a lot about the quality of the execution, I should say, of Columbia City. You know, every year we have that SAC versus NHC debate, and I think that game last week really was telling. You know, maybe the top teams are pretty, pretty, you know, com comparable, but when your bottom feeder in the NHC beats the bottom feeder in the SAC by 39, that tells you the strength at the lower end of the NHC, which is a lot higher than the the, uh, the lower ends of the SAC. So I was really impressed with that win. I thought it was going to be closer mm -hmm. than than 39-0. That's for sure. Norwell versus Marion. I know we were talking off camera. Uh, Norwell's a secretly could be a nice yeah. team to watch in the postseason. I told my colleague Reggie Hayes I was this close to picking Norwell in this sectional. So I will not be surprised if Norwell wins next week against New Haven if they do meet. Um, you know, Mar you know Marion gets their first win last week against Jay County. Um, I don't see them coming to Norwell and really being able to compete with Norwell. Just yeah. too fundamentally sound the Knights are. Yeah, Norwell has been playing uh, pretty good football as of late.